we can always count on GDQ to raise insane amounts of money in such little time. Keep it up, everyone. All right, now we hit the incentive. We raised it all. You wanted it and you got it. It is now time for Resident Evil 3 Remake by Mike Wave. Evil 3, we're going to be doing some New Game Standard, which is the main category for this game where we play with no New Game Plus items. It's all New Game, so no Infinite Rocket Launcher, nothing like that. Just what the game gives us. If, uh... My couch, my virtual couch, wants to introduce themselves real fast. Sure, I am Waifu. I also run this game sometimes. And I'm Maxi Lobes. I used to run this game sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So time is going to start in five, four, three, two, one, and go. All right, so we are playing on the standard difficulty, which is uh, because there are five difficulties on this game, it looks like it's pretty low, but actually uh, standard has some things about it that make it pretty difficult compared to the other categories. And that is mostly going to be how these zombies behave. So here we are starting out in uh, Jill Valentine's apartment. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be RE7 again because we're in first person, but no, it's just a debate. Uh, after these two cutscenes, we're going to go ahead and transfer over to third person, just like it was in RE2R. And we're getting a phone call from someone. And uh, we don't know who it might be. So I'm going to wait here for a second, and I'm going to skip right here. What the hell is that thing? So you're going to see me let a couple of cutscenes play intentionally here, because uh, your camera is transitioning while these cutscenes are starting to play. And it could, intent, like, it could uh, screw up your movement in the upcoming parts of the game. So uh, we're just running around here, away from this guy right here, uh, Nemesis, who is the main bad guy of the game. Uh, probably the most iconic RE baddie. And uh, we just got to get out of this apartment here. Let me see what I can... Oh, nice, all right. Believe it or not, turning at that stairwell right there is, like, the biggest cause of resets out of, like, anything in this game. So if you guys, like, want to help uh, explain the lore of what's going on a little bit. Yeah, sure. Basically, right. we're playing as uh, Jill Valentine, and we're just chilling in our apartment, and a zombie outbreak is taking over the whole city, and there's this special zombie that's okay? made by Umbrella to go kill STARS members, as Jill is one of those STARS members, so he's going to be chasing us throughout the city while we try to escape. Yeah, here we got Brad, who's like one of uh, Jill's, uh, I don't know how you say it, like one of her teammates. Like, he's also part of STARS, which is like the special uh, division of the Raccoon City Police Department. And yeah, they're the only two members left in town, as Brad just said. Right, months prior to this, uh, Resident Evil 1 uh, takes place. So Brad is one of the survivors of the Arkley Mountains incident. Yeah, he piloted the helicopter. He, he did quite a lot. <laughs> very, very important. <laughs> Flew around in circles for a couple hours. Yeah. The mansion explodes. So explode. right there, you just saw me close. open and close my menu. Uh, there is supposed to be a scripted stagger right there as that sign falls, but we found out by pausing the game quite a lot, you can affect the game physics quite a bit. And uh, we're basically in this auto scroller for a little bit. It's about four minutes long. Uh, it's one of the reasons like, a lot of people probably drop this game is because every time you reset, you got to do this this four minutes of uh, holding W for a bit. The parking garage isn't far. I can take you there. Mr. Dario, right there. I forgot what his last name was, but uh, classic character from RE3, OG. And we're just trying to get over to this parking garage right here. This is mostly, again, just like kind of scripted, auto scrollery, like just cutscene stuff. But the real run's gonna get started in just a moment. And I so suppose. Right here, uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna mention, uh, Mike is doing a couple of uh, string dodges right here to uh, get to this fence earlier. String dodges, you're gonna see a ton of. Uh, in this run, yeah, it's it's much faster than just regular movement. In a lot of cases, where there are doors, like right here, he's going to triple dodge to a scripted event, where he's going to get to the elevator door. So. It's my turn, bitch. Yeah. 
It should also be mentioned that dodging right before any enemy like grabs you or tries to attack you will give you what's called a perfect dodge where you have this like flash of light for a little bit and Jill just gets iframes and rolls past them in like a really fancy like fashion. Yeah, and especially that's important because it's only faster to dodge three times in a row in most instances if you the third time you dodge you interrupt it by some sort of animation like opening a door or like starting an elevator or going into a cutscene so you'll hit see him start dodging at very specific times as to not um cause a slowdown the, after the third dodge you have a slowdown and then you start running at full speed again but this can be interrupted by interacting with objects or even doing another perfect dodge so you'll see him do a technique called chain dodging later where he'll do one or two dodges before to set up for a perfect dodge so that way he gets to do three dodges in a row ending with a perfect dodge and not losing any speed you don't have to trust me but i'm going to the shelter yeah like they said uh you're gonna see me do another one right here while you're in fine it is actually faster to spam uh dodges like this right here even with this like long cooldown in between there and I'm gonna do it right into this cutscene trigger. We're just gonna go ahead and get moving. We need to get you geared up. Oh, something else you're gonna see me doing a lot throughout this run is something called stair skating. It was present in RE2R, uh, but basically, whenever I'm going up or down stairs, I'm gonna be aiming and then letting go of my aim kind of fast. Oh, I should have. Actually, no, it's okay. Um, you see this right here? It's helping me to climb the stairs a little bit faster. It is faster than the, the normal climbing up and down animation on stairs. And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that radio call so I can grab that herb because this first part of the game is by far the most RNG heavy part of it. Uh, it is extremely RNG heavy, I should, I should mention, more than anything else in the game. And we're gonna be going straight into caution right here using this barrel that you can see on the left right there because Jill, like Claire in RE2R, does run faster when she is in caution. So we are gonna ideally wanna be in caution basically the entire run. So I'm gonna blow myself up there right there, killing these two zombies. And now we're running just a little bit faster. Ooh, I'm gonna get some bad RNG here. Okay, I gotta move over here. I'm gonna try this chain dodge here still. Hey, there we go. So yeah, the donut shop defenders are, <laughs> yeah, they, they're a pain. Um, most of them are actually, they have scripted up. movement, but one of them can just I mess up, up everything. Yeah, this guy uh, did not do what he was supposed to do. I was supposed to chain dodge that guy as well. But that guy could be very, very random with how he moves. Like I said, there is quite a lot of RNG here. I'm also going to move that. Yeah, basically as well, like the zombie spawns are not random themselves, but as soon as they spawn, they essentially start moving around. So the slower you go, the more variance in the positioning that they can have. And sometimes they're just going to be way out of position. There's really not much you can do uh, about it. I got on the um, here too. Actually, Mike's, no, Mike's also playing on standard, which is not like super easy, but it does have less aggressive enemies than higher difficulties. And because of that, uh, they're going to attack him later, which actually gives him less time to dodge. So dodging can be significantly easier at higher difficulties because the attacks are way more telegraphed. Sometimes yeah. on standard, uh, it's literally impossible to dodge enemies because they'll attack so late that they just instantly grab you. Yeah. So he has to be careful that if he's going to go for a dodge that the enemy is going to aggro. Yeah, you saw me got unlucky at that one guy outside the uh, outside that station. I'm gonna see. Here we're introduced to Nikolai, who's like the main bad guy of the game. Uh, I was hoping to get the uh, the door clip right there, but yeah, he's he's very good at magic tricks. He can just immediately vanish right there. And I'm gonna go for another chain dodge on these doggos right here. There we go. But yeah, as you see, whenever I can basically go for a chain dodge, I go for it. It's just faster than moving around normally. Oh, nice. We got good RNG on these dogs. Yeah, and yeah. those chain dodges are really. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, you know, it, it seems like maybe those chain dodges are pretty small time saves, uh, but over the course of the run, it really does add up. And that's kind of yeah. what Resident Evil speedrunning comes down to a lot of the times, is very small time saves throughout the entirety of the, uh, of the game that just kind of adds up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And doing those, oh, those uh, chain dodges is really hard because you have to know where exactly to start your dodge when you're like maybe 10 to 15 feet away from an enemy, which is like oh really far away. So you like really have to practice like where you're going to start those chain dodges. 
Yeah, we normally see, like, look for a mark on the ground that we can use, and we know, okay, you gotta do the dodge from, like, around here to get this. Right, I'm gonna as go you can see, right some, some pretty precise menuing as well. Gross. Yeah, that right there is the only herb you are required to use throughout the entire run after that cutscene. Because uh, there are these enemies right here called Drain Deimos. And they are probably the worst enemy in the entire run because they are extremely random and they like to cost you a lot of time. I'm going to take a hit intentionally here. That didn't quite put me back in caution yet. That's okay, though. So this game, uh, Jill does run faster in caution. And that's really important to note because it does save a significant amount of time over the course of the run. However, as opposed to RE2 Remake, this game actually has several points where the game will give you full HP for free. Mm -hmm. So um, that actually complicates the caution setups a lot. Um, depending on how you initially get into caution and how many items you pick up or how much additional damage you may take, um, like it mandatory, it's being mandatory to heal here specifically makes caution setups really weird. Uh -oh. um, if he were to do it perfectly, then he could set it up so that when he heals, um, he gets healed into caution and never leaves caution, but it's really hard to set that up. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm being pretty ballsy here. I think we're good though. So I did take that other hit intentionally so I can get back into caution, because again, it is so, so important. Oh, okay. And there's specifically yeah. one attack you never want to see from the Drain Damus, which is the uh, the grabby, infecty yeah, attack. The lunge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super long animation and you're, you're infected with the parasite, so you actually have to heal again. Yeah, which can otherwise... mess up your caution setup, and it's just it's a nightmare. Terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. If that happens in a run, you, it's basically just an instant reset. Luckily, it did not happen to us, though. So we're in the, in the clear, plus we're in caution still. And if anyone's oh, wondering, it... these okay. types of enemies weren't in the original. This is kind of one of those new additions to the remake. Yeah. So I forgot he's actually... we're not doing an actual run. <laughs> he, he's actually going to do something uh, really interesting here. There is multiple types of dodges, actually. If you tap the aim button right before you get hit, you actually get invincibility frames for a brief period of time. He's going to use this to skip the stagger on Nemesis, and uh, it's used in a couple other sections, like, very minutely, but it's really hard to pull off. It's a very precise timing. I'm actually going to let this radio call play here, just so Nemi will behave in this following room. Oh, there we go. Run! I'm trying, Carlos, I'm trying. All right, so he's going to drop down here again on the left. And we're going to go ahead and try to bait out the tentacle attack he likes to do. Hello, sir. It's kind of slow, though, because our DA is a little bit low from that grab we got earlier. And uh, also, you'll see there that Mike is listening to the radio calls. This is because the radio calls actually pause the in-game timer. So you can cover, like, big distances of ground with... and then not skip the radio call. This actually loses you no time. So you might travel like 100 feet and have the timer not be running the whole time. Carlos. Yeah, I'm trying not to do that because this time, uh, this run is being timed RTA, but there are still some uses for it, like that last room. I don't know if it exactly does anything, but where Nemi can drop down there is very heavily affected by, I think, how much time you spend in that one room, as well as uh, how much time you take. So I did want to make it kind of consistent here. Sure the also, uh, Mike mentioned something called DA. Uh, let's cover that. Let's cover that now. Oh yeah, that's a big um, topic. So difficulty adjustment is what that stands for. Uh, you call it dynamic difficulty if you want as well. There's a few names for it, but uh, it's basically a mechanic where the game tracks how well or how poorly you're playing, and it'll adjust to, you know, your skill. So if you start the game and you end up getting bit like five times and have to use like a bunch of heals and stuff, um, you know, the game will lower the uh, difficulty ranking just slightly in your favor so that you can have a bit of an easier time. Uh, this affects how much damage you take to certain attacks. Ah, and it's, uh, it, it definitely changes the way that the game kind of works. Um, in standard That's for this game, DA usually doesn't affect the run too much, um, but it's it's just nice to point out that it, that is a thing in this game. RE2 Remake had the oh. same thing, RE4 has the Come same on, thing. Yeah. It's in yeah, a few and, games, so. And uh, the amount that the DA affects the run really depends on the category as well. Like, um, standard DA is important, but it's not a huge thing. 
and then like let's say inferno a da is like ultra important like mm -hmm. it's probably the most important aspect of the entire run and for a run say like nightmare it doesn't actually have da so re3 has drastically different uses for da depending on what the category is all right and hopefully it doesn't falcon punch me here this is a pretty clenched moment right here all right we're good nice. oh no he's gonna hit us now we're good okay <laughs> <laughs> debating the chat there yeah but yeah uh it, it should also be mentioned there are various points in the game where your da is actually set to a predetermined point like the devs made it so like when so right here in the sewers the devs made it so you're always at 5500 da out of like uh it goes to a max of 8.9 on uh on standard but it will always be 5500 no matter what your da was beforehand when you go into the sewers that's kind of why it's not too big a deal but it can still affect some areas because da does affect how much damage you uh take and how much damage you do to enemies yeah and right, da so is raised oh, oh, uh, da is raised by a couple things the biggest thing is that da is raised significantly by i believe like what 100 or 200 for every thousand is the rank of DA, which is the incrementation for how things actually change, like in the game. But yeah, like every time you do a perfect dodge, your DA is raised significantly. So you want to do a lot of perfect dodges because they're fast, but in, in some circumstances, it could actually be a bad thing if you're forced to do too many. Yeah, I got so I got some pretty unfortunate RNG back there. Uh, it's possible to chain dodge that one. Uh, these enemies are called gammas, like hunter gammas. Not to be confused with like the titular hunters that uh, you encounter in the older Resident Evil games like RE1. Uh, but these guys have a one-shot mechanic, so we hopefully don't want to get hit by that. But they also do this tail swipe if we try to pass them here. So I gotta be kind of careful here. Which, by the way, this tail swipe is actually insanely broken. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it has a huge, huge hitbox, does lots of damage. But it is pretty telegraphed, though, so it's not too hard to dodge. Right. Yeah. For, us. for a lot of people, the 100 gammas are like the hardest thing in the game to dodge, but they're actually yeah. pretty telegraphed. It shouldn't be insanely difficult with some practice, but the problem is if you mess up, they insta kill you. So yep. uh, you gotta be really careful. <laughs> and the alternative, uh, what you're really supposed to do here in the series, you're supposed to, you're supposed to actually pick up the, uh, the grenade launcher. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how you actually take care of the gammas. The game doesn't actually expect you to try to dodge the tail swipes. So yeah. early on, when this game came out and routing was happening, a lot of people were actually picking up the grenade launcher because they didn't know that you could do that. So, yeah, the yeah, people uh, were afraid to try to dodge it even because, like, it tends to kill, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the flame rounds from the grenade launcher one-shot the gammas. They take a lot of damage from fire. Uh, but that's kind of slow. We don't need to kill any of them. Uh, they can all live. And right here, we're going to re-encounter Nemi, who this time has a flamethrower. And we're just going to run away from him. We just got to climb this building while he's slowly chasing us in scripted format. Yeah, and uh, the frag grenades are also really good against Gammas, but they're even better against Nemi 1, or the first boss yeah. of Nemesis. Um, basically, they're not really that useful for anything else in the game, but oh man, do they absolutely annihilate the first Nemesis fight. Yeah, they make just mince meat of him. So for those who might have uh, watched the speedruns of RE2 Remake, uh, this game has a knife that you do not equip as a defensive item. It's like it's its own weapon. And unlike the RE2 Remake knife, which is incredibly broken uh, at the higher frame rates, can just shred bosses. In this game, the knife is pretty bad as per RE tradition. So uh, we're not going to be using it at all. That's why you saw me bank it earlier. So we're just going to be using the pistol and uh, some frag grenades for this upcoming fight right here. Like White, you mentioned, uh, frag grenades are pretty busted against this boss particularly. But they're pretty strong in general. You only, I think, how many frags are in the game? It's only like four like or five three or, or four. something like that. Something yeah, really I think small. it's not uh, many. I think Jill has four, and then Carlos has a yeah. few. Yeah, he has like the one in the uh, in the locker room, I remember. Yeah, and then we used to grab, but not anymore. Yeah, right. Maybe I can hit the <laughs> um, but yeah, this fight is really, really particular. Um, he has a lot of invincibility frames, so you have to attack him at very specific times during his animations. Otherwise, it just does no damage. So this fight's actually, it looks kind of simple, but it's actually very particular about when you're doing things. Yeah, there we go. We threw that grenade, so on the very first frame that he lost iframes, he's dead. 
and we're just going to go ahead and skip past this radio call because RTA, normally you would listen to this like radio call all the way to this ladder because it's just free distance that you make. And we're going to go ahead and backtrack to a completely different game. So for those who, like I said, played RE2R, you might recognize this area right here, right outside the RPD. We're going to be going back to the station to meet up with uh, Carlos, who's our buddy who we were uh, hanging out with earlier. We're trying to get the subway back online. I was going to do a chain dodge here, but I screwed up my movement. That's okay. You can uh, chain dodge that lady who's getting up from the floor, and it's actually pretty easy. And we're going to be going into this one shot. One of the media parts. Say hi to Kendo. Oh. Uh, bye, Kendo. He's got a tragic backstory to run back to. All right. Feels so bad, right here, man. we're gonna be picking up this very important upgrade right here. It's the automatic shotgun upgrade. It is going to allow us to shoot the shotgun like way faster once we get it later, because the grenade launcher and the shotgun do show up way later in the game if you don't pick them up from where they initially are. And that upgrade, again, just allow us to shoot it very, very fast. Also give it more capacity, which is going to be very useful for some boss fights coming up. Yeah, that's, that was also a feature in Resident Evil 2 Remake that surprisingly we didn't figure out until like months in. Like, oh look, mm. if you just skip the weapons, they show up way later. And very yeah, conveniently, I... they show up right before the second boss fight in this game. Yeah. I think they probably were added in just so the developers were like, okay, so if someone like, you know, somehow missed the shotgun or the, the grenade launcher, you know, and they then get they're not completely out of luck, you know? Yeah, well, because, well, the way the second boss is designed, you pretty much need the grenade launcher to beat it casually. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. make sure that they get it. All right. So this is kind of, that was kind of like a pseudo boss fight. That right there was Rocket Nemi. He's back, but with a rocket launcher. Uh, that part is pretty easy, actually, though. Uh, you saw me do this camera manip where I was running against the wall, uh, very close to it with my camera turned, and that made Nemi kind of uh, not very smart, and he just got stuck and gave us enough time to run away from him. Yeah, Normally, he'll camera. chase you. Yeah, and, like, sometimes you'll have, like, an aimbot and just be able to, like, just hit you from, like, 10 miles away, but getting him stuck makes that part a lot easier. Yeah, the camera is super important for manipulating Nemesis. Um, if, you, if you're looking at him, he'll never jump in front of you. And if you're looking at the ground, then he'll never do the tentacle attack. So, like, there's very specific camera movements that you're doing when you're running away from Nemesis as to not have him do something that would be slow, like jumping in front of you or grabbing mm -hmm. you with a tentacle. And now that we're kind of just running back to the station, I'd say now would probably be a good time for some donations. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of uh, good ones here. All right, I got to... <laughs> I gotta test my uh, VA chops here. We have a $500 donation from Paco Taco, who says, stars. That's pretty good. That was my first one. We have another $500 donation uh, from JSP136, who says, I must have Resident Evil 3. Well, you got it. Thank you both for the $500. We have a $25 donation from Dan219, who also says, Stars. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for the 25 What about you? You can go ahead and do another one. Okay. We actually have a haiku here, uh, I do believe. $20 from Solarath, who says, The end of Sonic and the start of something new. Let's bring on the stars. <laughs> Clever. All right, so now we are going to be getting on the subway. We're going to be saying bye to Jill for a little bit. And we're going to be going to play as Carlos in an entirely different game. Some of you might recall this place. Yeah, it's RPD. So right. this yeah, game does reuse some uh, RE2 this locations a little bit. You sure? And Carlos, as you're going to see, is going to play a little bit differently from Jill. So unlike Jill... I'm actually just going to kill Brad. This will make it easier. So normally we have a strat here where we uh, let Brad bite us intentionally. And that'll help skip this voice line coming up right here. You'll see it. Can I get some Fs in the chat for Brad? Yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, Fs in the chat for Marvin. He got debated, dude. That go? <laughs> That's Brad so said, true. Sorry. We got a job to do. Sorry! Dude, and Marvin was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a rescue. 
Man, I missed the English voice acting of this game. So something we should explain really fast is that uh, in speedruns, we actually run this game in Japanese because Japanese is two seconds faster, actually, compared to every other language because there's a pause in a voice line that's missing later. So it's literally just a free two-second time save. So... Right. I haven't played this game in English in good quite a while, know. actually. I'll open the yeah, so a lot of a lot of really good lines from Carlos in this game. On like one thing that I gotta say Go is ahead, a lot better it. than RE2 remake is uh, a lot of the character hey. like dialogue and just like the just, just the way yeah. that they interact with each other is just great. Yeah, yeah, much better. It's, it's really really nice. Bunch of good lines in this game. <gasps> so I did what mess up some inventory it? stuff right there. It usually is a bit more optimized than this. But uh, that's okay. So right here, you're going to be seeing me use the shoulder bash. So like I was saying earlier, uh, Carlos has a shoulder bash instead of a uh, Jill's dodge, which is not nearly as useful, but we can use it to stagger some enemies like that right there. And that's going to let us get past some guys. Right here, it, sh it should be important to note, it, uh, to note a rule that the zombies have in place with their AI. Their only one can Dude, ever try to grab copy. you at a time. Really so nice right do. here, I'm going to go ahead and let the zombie on the floor try and grab me and that'll let me get past all the other zombies yep right there boom so yeah, you see how I'm... there was like five zombies there yeah by like baiting out that guy on the ground none of them none of the other zombies can do anything and then i just punch that cop Carlos, yeah and uh, say, the that, that is significantly easier on like standard for example because the animations are longer it's one of the things that happens with the difficulties in this game is that it actually just speed up the animations. So while it's still true that you can only have one zombie aggroed on you at a time with their lunge, um, the time between lunges on like a lower difficulty like standard is a lot bigger than on the higher difficulty, but it actually functions the same. So it makes things a, a little bit complicated when you're trying to figure out like who's gonna lunge when and stuff and makes your movement yeah. very precise. So with Carlos, the most important thing is having really precise movement so that you can guarantee that certain enemies are gonna aggro at certain times. And right here, I'm gonna go for the perfect punch, as we like to call it, where I just punch this liquor, so he's off me. Yeah, that's something Carlos can do, though. He, he's pretty strong, he's a, he's a strong boy, so we can go ahead and uh, punch some of these enemies who would normally give us some trouble. That sick falcon punch. Yeah. <laughs> so here, we're gonna blow up this wall. And right here, what we we have what's called Yolo Carlos for this game. Time, nice. Okay. So again, abusing that one zombie rule right there to get past those guys. And we're gonna go ahead and go back to Jill now. Very nice. Whew. Very, yeah, very nice. That was a pretty nice. good RPD. Yeah, Carlos is arguably the harder sections of the game. Yeah, I, I always no, felt absolutely. like. When you, you take away the dodge from the player, like, it gets way harder, especially doing, like, very precise speedrun tech. Yeah. But, yeah, like, the dodge is a lot more powerful than uh, Carlos's punch. All right, so right here, I'm going to go up. Oh, I didn't mean to put that in my inventory. Let me get that back. Okay. So here's where we pick up the shotgun and the grenade launcher, as we mentioned earlier. They both spawn right here because we have a boss fight coming up. And this is probably the most uh, difficult boss fight in the game, speedrunning wise, because we are going to be going for a pretty precise shot to stagger this boss and expose his weak point that normally you should not be able to do. But with this very precise shot, we can go ahead and speed up this boss fight by quite a lot. Yeah, so basically the way this boss fight works normally is you're supposed to use the grenade launcher mine rounds to knock him off the walls on the side. And then he'll show his core, which takes like double the damage is a normal shot. Um, mm -hmm. But you can actually trick the game into having this core come out immediately. Um, if you interrupt some of his specific attack animations at very specific times with the grenade launcher, it'll actually trick the game into thinking that he was on the wall or something similar, and he'll show his core immediately. And so if he does mm -hmm. it perfectly, it'll happen twice and make the fight super fast. Come on, let's go. Fine. There we go, first try. Yo. Very nice, dude. Yeah, that shot is uh, pretty difficult. That's probably one of the more difficult things you have to learn in this run. Big run and I'm killer, actually getting, too. Yeah, I've lost a lot of good runs to that shot. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a second shot now with this new strat that we have up. That's just a little bit faster than the older one we were using. So right here, we're going to be doing some more damage after we knock him down again. 
I'm going to be doing one shot on his head right here so he doesn't transition too early between phases. And there we go. Right as he's about to pounce us, we go ahead and shoot another one at him. And wake up, sleepyhead. Okay. And he should be dying just about now. There we go. That was a really good fight. Carlos, you still oh, yeah, that was that was, that was sick. <laughs> yeah, and that's that was... something that's like really enjoyable to watch about this run is that in RE2 Remake, like Mike mentioned earlier, the knife is basically what you use to beat all the bosses because it's mm -hmm. so overpowered. But in this game, you got to you got to pull out the crazy strats with the guns and uh, it makes it so much more yeah. interesting. There are actual yeah, the, boss fights in this game. No offense yeah. again, nor right, too hard. Yeah. But no, it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually they're have like to use the best part weapons. of the run too, I think. Like they're super. Cool. And yeah, claps in the chat for that. That was that was impressive. <laughs> so you're gonna see me. We're back as Carlos. Uh, the hospital is probably the second most RNG part of the game. Uh, there's gonna be three pretty RNG heavy parts of the run coming up, like three rooms that come up uh, successively. I should mention. And you're going to see me killing these two ladies right here. Because if you don't kill these ladies, they will cause you a lot of grief later in they these rooms. Because we are going to have to backtrack. Yeah, you return to those two rooms and their placement is completely random. Mm -hmm. as, as Waifu mentioned earlier in the run, like, uh, you know, they spawn in the same place, but they don't end up in the same place after a while, so... Especially after a super long segment like Hospital. They come right. back like two minutes later. It's like... I have no idea where they're going to be at. Mm -hmm. I can absolutely no clue. So we're yeah, just running around can. grabbing all these keys. We need uh, the hospital is structured kind of like a maze. Uh, a lot of people find themselves getting lost in it, but we're speedrunners, so we should know the layout of the map. You were should. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so lore wise, I should mention uh, this game takes place before and after RE2. So up until that last boss fight we did, the game took place before RE2, like about a day, roughly a day before RE2. So all that stuff you saw happening at the RPD was before Leon and Claire got there. And uh, now after Jill passes out from that boss fight, it is now a day after RE2. And we're trying to find Jill a vaccine. I did not want to pick that up because she's been infected and you know we need to get her back up and running. It's honestly the best because you're trying to find a vaccine to cure someone who already has a disease. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. and and not, it's the only vaccine. So we end up using like the only vaccine for the virus on someone who already has the disease and it somehow saves yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think that's how vaccines work, but you know. So right here, uh, we're introduced now to the actual hunter enemies. Uh, not to be differentiated from the hunter gammas that we saw in the sewers, like those white toad uh, monsters. These right here are the actual hunters, like the legit OG ones. And, and they're just, pretty dangerous. Uh, just like the original Resident Evil 3, they do have a one hit kill. And in this game, it's really hard to tell if they're going to be doing it or not. So it, they're definitely some of the scariest enemies. Okay. Yeah, they're also very susceptible to camera manips, like you saw right there. Yep. Oh, I don't know how that guy ate that shot. Okay. Good job, sir. Yeah, that hunter strat that Mike just did is pretty specific. Um, no flashbang strat, by the way. That's, uh... Yeah. That's Turn dangerous. Exactly. <laughs> Pray. So we're in caution right now as Carlos, but that's okay. Caution, uh, Carlos runs about the same speed in caution, so we don't have to heal. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh. I got some bad RNG there, but then I got good RNG because his leg just immediately fell off. That fat zombie being there is uh, not fun. All I wanted to know was what the documents were doing in your office. In so the that is the, that was the second Who RNG room we just passed. We have one more I'm coming up. I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. I should mention in the <laughs> lore, we're also trying to find Mr. Bard right here. Bard. The man who came up with the vaccine Hello. for the T-virus. But as you are all seeing right now, he's dead. So let's go ahead and find this vaccine for Mrs. Valentine. Is it here? Right here. Yeah. This and while Mike, uh, pink serum. while Mike goes and uh, cures Jill, let's, uh, let's hear some donations. I'm headed your way. Yeah. 
Sure, we got uh, plenty. We have a $533 donation from Holt Agnew, who says, Hey, all, sorry I'm late for the run, but looks like there's still plenty of fun left. This is my first time seeing a speed run of RE3 Remake, so this is a nice birthday treat. Donation goes to the runner's choice. Good luck with the rest of the run, Mike. Give them stars. So as you're seeing right there, I actually got insanely unlucky. <laughs> that is the third RNG room right there. We call it the sleeper zombie room. And where those zombies are positioned on the way back is just completely random. And as you saw, one was right there camping at the door waiting for me. That's okay, though. We're now going into what we call the cabin section of the game in a Die reference yeah. to RE4 and its notorious cabin. Die but this is basically going to be a, <laughs> yeah, a basically like a four or five minute long auto scroller where we just kill these zombies as they're coming in and defend Jill as she's yeah. uh, taking a nap. It's literally an auto scroller too, unfortunately. No matter how fast you kill the zombies, it doesn't matter. You just have to wait. I yeah. miss Lewis. Yeah, you can go ahead and read a lot more donations if you want. We got plenty of time right now. Sure, we've got plenty here as well. We have a $25 donation from Alex and Du Bois, who says, I have been watching GDQ since 2016, but this is the first time I ever successfully caught it live. This is such an amazing event, and I am glad to finally have been able to contribute my own little bit to help MSF. I am so excited for the RE3 run tonight. Stars. <laughs> Now, we have a $50 donation from Aquastar831, who says, In the words of Jill Valentine, You want stars? I'll give you stars. We have a $5 donation from Consuela, who says, I think this is a uh, one of our little poems here. There was once a girl from Raccoon City, but she had such great aim, so don't pity. She fought some dead faces while Nemesis chases, thanks to the Umbrella Committee. <laughs> that was pretty smart. That was pretty good. We have $100 from Aradim, who says, Resident Evil 3 was one of the first games I played as a kid. Thank you, Dad. I've never seen the remake speedrun, so, and I am pretty hyped for it. We have a yeah, $50 you know, donation from Mr. Too. P, who says, Resident Evil hype. So right here, the lights are gonna go ahead and turn off right after that kill. Yep, and here comes a hunter at that door. And we're gonna grab some grenades back here to kill him real fast. And that should take care of them. Yeah, the sequence is always exactly the same. It ends after you kill the second hunter. And uh, yeah, it, it, you have to have all of the zombies killed when the hunter yeah. comes out to have it end. But that's really easy to do. So you just have the hunter pop out, then you kill him, and then it ends. Yeah, so all the enemies also spawn in the exact same order every single time. And like Waifu mentioned, uh, the sequence will basically be over once this last zombie dies. Well, no, it's actually the hunter, but if you take too long, you can still have zombies wandering around. And I should mention, uh, your DA is actually locked at this point in the game because the devs knew you were going to kill a bunch of enemies, so they didn't really want to be too unfair. Yeah, if they so didn't lock the DA... Yeah. It would yeah, just skyrocket because you're killing a bunch of zombies, so. Yeah. And this is also the last part where we are going to be playing as uh, Mr. Carlos, because after that, it's going to be all Jill, so we don't really have to worry too much about our inventory from here on out. Oh, and and even though you're supposed to turn the breaker back on, it actually doesn't matter. You can just leave it off and the sequence will still end. Yeah, you're just chilling at nighttime. But uh, yeah, and when we switch back, it's going to be an another instance of us getting full HP again. When we switch back the first time, we also got full HP, but all we do is the boss fight, so it's not worth it to go back into caution. Uh, yeah. This time, it is going to be worth it to go back into caution because there's a significant amount of running distance at the end of the game. And the hunter will be spawning in just a moment here. It's around when this shade passes that like one like square in the middle right there. I've like done it so many times now, right? Just now, I think. There he is. And also enemies in this sequence, if you just turn your camera real fast after killing them, will just like immediately disappear like that. Just pull a vanishing act. And now it's basically over. We just wait for it to end. If you want to go ahead and get another donation or two out of the way. 
Sure. We definitely can. We have $25 from the appropriately named Nemesis 50 who says, I want to see stars. And we have another, I think this is a haiku here, a $100 anonymous donation that says, Nemesis stalks Jill, Raccoon City, their playground. She will show you stars. You can go ahead and do one more. All right, we have a we have a two hundred dollar donation from Steve one ninety seven who says, "Good luck, runners. Here's a motivational haiku: Stars, 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 stars. Refrigerator. Thank you, Steve. Thank you." All right, so now we're gonna be going back to Jill and we're gonna be entering what's known as the late game. Uh, we're gonna be going, as per our tradition, to an underground lab to find out what's actually been going on. So you're actually allowed to go back and uh, pick up stuff in the hospital that you didn't get as Carlos and carry it instead as Jill, but it's a waste of time. There's actually a Magnum you can get there as well, only as Jill, but we don't need it, it's unnecessary. And we're just going to be heading down now to the underground warehouse that's underneath this hospital. Oh, this must be the way underground. So since we're in fine, I'm going to be spamming a lot of dodges here because it is faster than just walking. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some uh, pit slime we have here. This is a part of the game where inventory matters quite a lot because it's, it's going to be very, very packed. And I'm actually going to be doing a safety strat in just a little bit, or like a safety route, I should say. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this herb. I would normally would not pick this up in any like serious like world record run. Cause I am gonna stop now at the box to make room. Yeah, he his inventory's gonna get super tight here. Cause he has to keep both the shotgun, the grenade launcher, and the three round birth pistol, as well as pick up three different puzzle items. And I have to carry yeah. them all at once. So mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the inventory is really small to be doing all that. There we go. I'm just gonna put the lockpick away because there's no reason to have it anymore. And like Waifu was saying, we're gonna have to go around this warehouse right here. Uh, we're chasing Nikolai, who uh, we know is a bad guy now and trying to find out what he's up to. And as you see right here, fuse is blue out, power is out. And we're introduced to a new enemy type right here known as the pale head, which are like faster zombies who can regenerate. They're kind of like the RE4 generators. Okay. Want to take that back uh, intentionally. Get back into caution. Yeah, that that setup can sometimes go wrong because uh, that pale head will just stay on the ground, and you'll have to take yeah. a, uh, a ground bite, which is a lot slower. Yeah, we call it uh, him turning into a crawler when that happens, right. and enemies are just a lot slower when they try to crawl and grab you. So, ideally, we don't want that. And if these pale heads seem familiar, they're from the RE2 remake DLC, the Ghost Survivors. Yeah. So if you feel like you've seen them before, it's probably what we see them, saw them from. And if this map looks familiar, it's because it was in the Project Resistance Wait. demo. Everyone's favorite yeah, multiplayer online experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We had to get one Resistance joke in. Yeah, yeah. It's, Resistance has been become quite the meme in our community. Yeah. But yeah, we're just running around grabbing these fuses. So we can get back up to where Nikolai is. So you can actually do this part carrying uh, one fuse at a time back there. Uh, the game allows you to backtrack, but uh, that's obviously slow. We want to get them all at once so we can just be done with it. And I should mention the warehouse is actually harder on standard than it is on the higher difficulties like Nightmare and Inferno. So right here, there's a crate full of zombies that is not there for some reason on Nightmare and Inferno. And instead, this crate coming up right here that's gonna blow up will have both a Gamma plus a bunch of dogs, but they don't actually do anything. You can just get to this ladder before it, as you see right there, the ladder gives you iframes, so they can't really do anything to you there. He's fast. And he, yeah. <laughs> here we're gonna have one of the, my most hated rooms. I, I've lost so many rooms, like, or so many runs to this room right here. Right here, this pale head in the back can survive this mine round I'm gonna use right there. And he can be a massive troll coming back, so I'm gonna be hoping for some good RNG on the way back. Uh, right here, I'm gonna manipulate this hunter. Versus pale boy, who will win. <laughs> here goes. As you saw right there, another camera manip for that hunter so he can't do anything. And please give me good RNG. 
Ah, I knew it. I knew it. He he was ready. Fail boy so one. yeah, that guy is very capable of killing a lot of runs. And oh, he's back for some action. Thanks, sir. You you can go now. You can go now, sir. This dude. Uh, Oh, you almost got me again. Oh, my God. Like I said, that guy is one of the biggest trolls in the entire run. I, I'm not even joking. All right. So now, I go. I went ahead and shot a mine round at that group right here. You can act, These guys will all spawn as you come in and turn into uh, tentacle heads, which are those enemies you saw with the giant parasite on their head that can hit you from far away. And uh, if you shoot a mine round at them before they get up, you just kill them before they even spawn, technically. And right here, we're back with Mr. Tyrell. We're chasing Nikolai down into the lab. So to update everyone on the lore on what's going on, uh, the government is basically going to blow up Raccoon City with a nuclear bomb, and we need to stop that. And the only way they'll call off... Oh, I didn't get it right there. The only way they'll call it off is if we get them a sample of the vaccine so need to stop? that we used on Jill earlier. So something you saw me do right there is I used the flame round to go ahead and cancel that dialogue. Also, I just want to say, like, out of the original characters, Tyrell was expanded upon a lot, and he's, like, actually super dope in this game, so... Yeah. He's... Yeah, F's in the chat for Tyrell. Yeah, he's dope until he doesn't give me the, the boost, and then I don't care about him anymore. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> give me a push, I, I got man. a new world record last night, actually, not to brag or anything. And I lost like three seconds to Tyrell, so I'm I'm a little bit mad at him still. <laughs> you gotta learn to swing by oh, yourself that's fair. sometimes, man. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna be entering the lab, like the actual parts of the lab where all the enemies are. I'm gonna be doing a chain dodge right here on this normal zombie. I'm gonna be moving fast enough so these pale heads can't do anything. So you're supposed to grab uh we're we're gonna form our own vaccine basically using different components. So we have to do a fetch quest throughout the entire like lab sequence. And uh, you have to grab two parts. And one of them was back in that room. So you might be wondering if you played the game, you know, why don't you go for that part first? It's really close to where you start out. And the reason is it's actually faster to go for uh, what's called the test tube, which is all the way over here. Uh, it's actually faster to go for this part first and then come back later and deal with that room because of how the enemies are positioned. So right here, we have another infamous room coming up if one of you guys want to explain what I'm going to be doing here. Yeah, uh, the party room. Party room. <laughs> yeah, so basically, the, room. The, the enemies in this room coming up, uh, they spawn, but they're not really affected by the mine rounds um, yeah, they, until they a certain these... point after they've spawned. Yeah, they have these really long idle animations of them walking out of the, the hut. <laughs> And for a lot of those, they just don't take any damage. So you could shoot someone yeah. in the face with a mine round and they will just not move. So he has to do like some very precise movement here to just like basically wait till they're all awake and then it explodes so he can actually get through. Which he's done very well. That was the perfect example yeah, of how to do that room. And then right and now underneath we it, kill these hunters. Yeah, right underneath it, there's like six hunters or something. And oh. thankfully, mine rounds are really good against hunters. So you can just set them up so that it kills them like as soon as they spawn. All right, and now we're just going to be doing some backtracking. We're going to go get that second part I was talking about that was in that first room. And right here, I'm going to play this one safe. I'm tired of getting memed. Actually, no, I can go for this. The manip. No Woo, just run past everyone. Should have mine around at this guy. We're gonna grab the second part here. I also like how uh, they said, like, wait, don't nuke us. We have a vaccine. But they actually don't anymore because they already used it. Yeah. So they're like, <laughs> so they're like hold on, let me make another on. one real quick. Oh, Gonna also, something, this, uh... oh, something we haven't mentioned is. Uh... Back when Mike was fighting Nemesis, uh, Nemesis for the second time, uh, did we mention how grenade launchers ammo switching works? Oh, no, we didn't, actually. So when you have two different grenade launch ammos, like if you have mine rounds and flame rounds, or like acid rounds and flame rounds, um, when you switch ammo types, you can actually switch weapons as soon as you try to switch ammo types and then switch back to the mine uh, or the grenade launcher. And that specific ammo that you switch to 
will be in your grenade launcher without having to do the long animation of putting all the shells in. Yeah. So that's actually a way uh, of getting, you know, full ammo in your grenade launcher really quickly. But it only works with ammo switching, not reloading. Yeah, so you can yeah, just cancel the animation helpful. for switching back and forth. And that's going to be really important when it comes to the next boss fight, which is uh, known as the, the slot machine. Because uh, <laughs> there is a ton of RNG. Basically, Nemesis is going to run around the outside and stop behind a certain, uh, a certain big cylinder. And you have to shoot the red things on the big cylinder, just like a slot machine. And uh, it's random which one he goes behind. And some of them could save significantly more time than others. But it's uh, generally OK most of the time. But sometimes yeah. you can get a really bad pattern. This is actually the one part of the game that's affected by FPS. Like, the faster your FPS, the faster he stops behind the tank. So because we're locked at 120, he'll always stop behind tank 5, unless you get particularly uh, bad RNG. I'm going to go ahead and use a mine round to kill that guy, because he sucks. And tank 5, yep. Yes, sir. And it's kind of a repeat of the... Uh, Nemesis 2 fight. He's kind of in the same form with some new attacks. Going to be shooting that exposed part of his. And I'm going to go ahead and manip him over here to this specific spot. Please don't hit me, sir. There we go. So he's going to run between 3 and 4 right here. And he's going to jump on tank 1. And that's going to give me an insta Carlos kill on him right here. Yeah, Carlos does immediately 20% of the boss's entire HP. So on standard, it's definitely the fastest to get Carlos to Nikolai? kill him at the end. Where did you go? Yeah. Yeah, it does 20% of the, the enemy's HP, so we got to abuse that to get just a very fast kill on him. And now we're going to be moving on to... This is basically a boss rush. We have a second Nemesis fight. This is going to be the final boss of the game. The run is almost over, basically. And we got to kill him in pretty spectacular fashion right here using this rail gun. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not going to work right away. And we're going to need to go push in these power cells that are on the side. And please give me the good pattern. Slot machine, please. OK, he gave me a good pattern. And on standard, nice. you can actually one cycle this boss, being able to push in all of the electric things in one downing of Nemesis. Yeah. My boss fights were really good this run. I'm surprised. Yeah. Like, there yeah, were a lot of memes, really but well. the boss fights were really good, actually. Wow. So, yeah, like, like we said, we can just one cycle this. He's down for so long on assisted and standard. I'm just going to go ahead and dodge this last power cell. On Inferno, he gets up like instantly. This boss has become quite, uh, yeah. quite a troll <laughs> on, on Inferno. Yeah, he on standard and assisted and even hardcore is kind of a pushover at times. He can like, really mess you up if he gives you bad RNG because it just loses a lot of time. But yeah. unlike Nightmare and Inferno, he's like actually a really hard boss and you will lose a lot of runs there to just dying. Yeah, he's by far the hardest boss on Nightmare and Inferno. He's at, he's basically a Dark Souls boss on those difficulties. Take off that armor, learn to roll scrub. Let's Come go. on. Next time, take the fucking hit. Boom. All right, I'm going to skip the cutscene there. So the run is going to be ending in just a little bit, folks. Thank you again for all the donations to help make this happen. And uh, time is going to be coming up as soon as we shoot Nikolai here on this pad. We'll call it out. It's going to be after these uh, after this elevator ride coming up. But do you guys have any uh, closing remarks? Uh, honestly, huge shout out to everybody who helped reach this incentive. Uh, yeah. It, it was an awesome push seeing you guys just go on those $5 donation trains through the Sonic block. So shout outs to all of you. you guys. You guys did it. Yeah, and shout out to everyone in the R3 community. There's still a lot of really active runners for this game, and it's really cool to see how yeah. far some of these categories are getting pushed. And uh, there's lots of resources if you want to learn the run as well. I would definitely suggest oh, it. It's so one of the better time runs. And time. Nice. There we go. I almost forgot to call it out. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I think it's one. Of the, it's definitely one of my favorite RE runs. It's, it's up there with like RE4 for me, and uh, I definitely would suggest it. Join the Discord and stuff. Yeah, we do have an official Discord, just like many of the other uh, RE games. Uh, you can find a ton of resources there. 
a ton of people who are willing to help. Still a lot of people running this game. There's a ton of different categories because there's five different difficulties. But standard tends to be the most popular. But there's a lot of people out there running Inferno. And, you know, all the yeah. help to them. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Like, there's a lot of people running all of the categories. So, like, there's always new times for each category. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get our results screen here. So despite all our efforts, Raccoon City still blows up, unfortunate. All right, let me get my results screen, please. And 4907, not too bad, considering not too bad. safe threats. Uh, yeah. That's super good. GG. <laughs> Yeah, GG's. Again, thank you everyone for watching. Very much appreciated. Go join the Discord. Thank you for all the help from the community. Thank you to everyone who donated. 80,000 is a lot. Very much appreciated. I hope your money was well worth it. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. All right, once again, GDQ claps in the chat. That was Mike Wave with a fantastic run of Resident Evil 3 Remake. We had a few more donations come in for that one, including $250 from Resident Evil GDQ veteran Hazeblade, who says thank you to everyone in the RE community who helped donate over 1.5 million channel points to a great cause. Here's to Mr. Wave's incredible speedrunning prowess. Incentive goes to runner's choice. And we have a $100 donation from Ken215, who says, I wanted to express my appreciation to the stars of the show and chip in for the RE3 run. Good luck, everyone. And right now, we are going to go to a Twitch advertisement. We'll be right back. All right, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online, powered by Twitch. Had a few more Resident Evil 3 remake donations that came in for that one, including a $50 donation from Leans, who says, I just love Resident Evil 3. Keep it up. We had a $50 donation from Mr. Nezu, who says, Pump to donate for a good cause and see you lock in those speedrun gains, Mike. Again, our previous run, that was Mike Way with the Resident Evil 3 remake. We're currently getting set up for our next run, which is Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. And by the way, we did meet the Gods Must Die showcase for Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. So that will be happening as well. Good job on meeting that incentive as well. 
We had a $50 anonymous donation who says, running away from Nemesis makes Resident Evil 3 basically a Sonic game. Got to go fast. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Bahamut who says, donating for Resident Evil 3 Remake Run. I've always loved the Resident Evil series. Yes, even the cheesy movies. Let's hit half a million and get that bonus game. And we did hit half a million and we got the bonus game. Thank you, Bahamut, for the $100. Currently sitting at $520,000. So coming up next, uh, we're still getting prepared for these. We, Of course, we have Devil May Cry 4 coming up. We also have our uh, daily recap coming up as well so we'll be getting to all that so we get a little bit more detail than i'm able to give you but we're still getting set up for that still got some resident evil donations uh we had a 50 dollars anonymous donation says more gdq more resident evil all right so we're about to we're about to go to the recap here but this should be my last hosting segment here and our next host bobby blackwolf will be taking over after the recap i just want to say thank you very much this is my seventh gdq hosting and it is always a pleasure and it gets more exciting every time thank you all very much it is now time for the gdq recap and bobby blackwolf will be taking over the host desk when we come back Thank you, Enigma, and welcome, everybody, to The Daily Recap. Uh, I am Jay Hobbs, and I am joined by, of course, fantastically qualified people that definitely are not also just conveniently on the interview team. We have <laughs> Feasel <laughs> <Fiesel, laughs> Kung Fu Fruit Cup and Spike Vegeta. Folks, how y'all doing tonight? Hey, I'm good. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We are doing great. We're hype. We've been going fast all day. Ready That's for more true, speed runs. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is great to hear. I'm glad that everybody is doing about as well as I am tonight. This is a good night for speedruns and a good night for recaps. So I want to remember, uh, want to remind everybody that is how this works. We are going to talk about some of the runs that we have seen today uh, by showing you several clips and also just tossing out some honorable mentions. And at the end or throughout, up to you, we want you all to help uh, us figure out which clip had, you know, the most energy today. Like which one was really just doing super well uh, who is having a great time, whatever that might mean to you. Uh, go ahead and spam the GDQ Wings emote in chat as that cl clip comes up or as we're talking about it at the end. And uh, without further ado, why don't we get into these clips, folks? Let's do it. Let's go ahead and start with our first one here. This is actually mine. So this is from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. We had an all Emeralds run being run by so the Sound Defense who has been trying to get this in for a long time. And the I think the kicker that finally made it were these special stage strats. Because look at this madness. Everybody remembers these stages, I feel like. You don't remember trying oh God, to actually so do them backwards and works. jumping in between God, the so red much. orbs. Like, so I didn't even scary. know that was possible. Wrong <laughs> turn there I love it. Yeah, I talked to him about it in our interview beforehand. He said, man, I can't let these be boring. I need to moonwalk everywhere. <laughs> he made sure that he made these as swag as heck. He talked, I'm, I'm not joking, he literally talked to Tassers, tool-assisted speedrun creators, <laughs> to be like, how can I make myself look as cool as possible playing through these stages? Oh God, Love sound that. defense, yeah. part of our community. Love that he got the that's opportunity well to show these well. off and backwalk so his way. Good. It looks like Ocarina of Time right now. He's backwalking Making Michael everywhere. Jackson <laughs> proud. But Spike, you got the next one. Let's, oh, well, okay, hold up. Well, real quick, I'm gonna reload this because everything just crashed. We're good. We're gonna get this in one second. <laughs> Wouldn't be a live event if it weren't gonna crash Man, on me in the middle of it. everyone to bring the energy of this video back so I have a visual on screen. <laughs> everyone there spam we go. your GDQ we got wings. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog the is up now. Today. So Spike, uh, talk us through this one. Yeah, so, uh, this is an awesome run by 2chan, another part of the great things, Sonic stream, block that we had today. And uh, uh, my God, this is, I've, I've always thought, but if I made like a top five or 10 strats in speedrunning, it would probably be Green Hill 3 from Sonic 1. You get speed shoes, you start going, and then you're not touching the ground for the rest of the level. Bang off a box, bang off a box, find another enemy, bang off the enemy. And you might think, oh, this is probably automated, right? It's not actually that hard. You just hold right. No, she has to make micro adjustments on every single one of those bounces. You might have never thought that Sonic could fly. That was Tails' job, Knuckles can glide, Green Hill 3, Five, Sonic, and 2chan, they get to fly. That was my high-flying moment of the day. Get those GDQ wings in. That was hype. 
<laughs> all right, Fiesel, you're up next. I'm hitting start right. on this clip. Well, you got two fur, don't you? That's right. So this afternoon, Mighty Myth showed off some handheld Zelda might during the Link's Awakening run. So this is the first time we've seen this version of the game in GDQ, and we're looking here at the Eagle Tower. So check out the use of bombs to create lag during the screen transitions. That's going to despawn the triggers that cause these pillars to collapse. And so you can skip using the metal ball. You also see a little bit of wall clip in here to jump through the barriers. Run is full of that. And then one last bomb trigger glitch in this next room. And that's it. Four pillars down. A big shortcut. So wow. speaking I love how the, yeah. the bombs don't knock you back, by the way, which no. has its own unique strength. Yeah, this would be a much different game if that were the case. But yeah. speaking of high yeah. flying, let's take a look at the rooster skip skip. So being able to skip the bird key without doing the rooster skip, it's one of the things that makes this version of the run a lot more accessible. And we're kind of skirting the line here about what's allowed. We're using a clip to go out of bounds, but still staying within the same room, which allows this trick to be used in the warpless category. And there you go, got the bird key. So really cool run, great performance by Mighty Myth. Wow, that's super cool as well. <laughs> that first clip you had of them, the Eagle Tower, the first time you play it, you will be there for 20 hours. Yeah, it's a you have no idea how to do that level. He breaks it in about actually 15 seconds. That's crazy. I, I think I had to look it up when I played it recently. All right. <laughs> but for maybe the, the like, just most obvious pick here, I mean, come no, on. Okay. Come through. Walk us through it. Literally high flying. This is, a, I can, you cannot get any more than this because I have never... It's never been so perfect where he literally says this is a high flying, this is a high flying thing. So this is um, George Wynn Kirby's uh, Virtual Boy Wario Land, Wario Land run, which happened last night. So it was late last night. You may have missed it, but super great run. This was Swordman Kirby's second run of this marathon. He's always a very, very um, highly skilled runner, usually in the Kirby category. But it's, so it's really cool to see him doing something a little different here. Um, and he, this is when he gets uh, the evil cap, which allows him to have some extra floating distance. So you can see some really nice, solid movement on his wave to get this cap. And then he's able to use this hat like throughout um, the majority of the rest of the run to help him just skip section after section. Uh, so it's really, really um, smooth. And, uh, you know, again, he it's literally high flying. It's amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> God. Yeah, we, we, we've got the volume kind of low, but he literally says it for you. Yeah, he uh, it's, it's great. I don't think he was shilling to try to get this into I think it's a, I think it's a play to make the highlight. <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah. 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 This definitely <laughs> deserves GDQ wings, I would say. <laughs> well, I'm maybe on, in Feasel's camp there. I think yeah. maybe... Uh, so well, now people know. And you know what? It worked. It <laughs> all right it, it did work uh we are almost out of here folks but we want to just toss out some honorable mentions and we want all of you in chat to let us know in chat like what did we miss what games from today did we did we miss so we got to go back and watch because that's what this is all about just t showing everybody hey go check out these runs in in the vod that you totally missed or maybe you didn't think we're going to be interesting at all what was interesting for you we had a couple people who wanted to uh, throw out some honorable mentions who who, uh, who wanted to start uh, just real quick, just wanted to throw in, um, of course, The Last of Us was, you know, such a huge game. So mm -hmm. uh, I not only thought that the run was great, but the runner was really fun. And um, I loved the dry humor all throughout. And I thought it was just um, great commentary and great performance there. So good, good run. Yeah, I, I want to toss out Sonic Heroes because it just oh, happened. Yeah. We couldn't have possibly had a clip in time for it. There was no uh, way. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> nope. it, it pretty much just happened. But I, I thought there was a really great moment where uh, uh, where Critical Sid had something that had never happened before because yes. that, that always happens and just clipped through the floor and fell through the bottom of the world. Because yes. that's Sonic Heroes for you in a nutshell. Yeah, so, that's so, all 3D Sonics. I was mentioning that earlier. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was great. Anyone else, any other honorable mentions? Uh, I know a lot of great stuff. Bioshock Infinite was great uh, last night by Blood Thunder. Always a joy to watch the Bioshock series. Uh, any runs that we're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Night Trap. I'm really Night looking Trap. forward to yeah. Night Trap pretty soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, same. I'm excited to interview Bullets for uh, St. Hazel's Hospital coming up later too. But <laughs> before then, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you all 100. Yeah. percent Like <laughs> night trap best ending. Get the snuggies on. Get some popcorn. <laughs> let's go.
<laughs> It'll be good. Big old bowl of popcorn. A big old bowl. For that one. We're gonna yeah. need your GD Kiwi wings through that to help to help Exes <laughs> get through this blindfolded. It's gonna be great. Right. Oh, yeah. It'll be incredible. Yeah. Please, everybody, remember to let us know how you're feeling about these daily recaps. New thing we're trying. We think it's pretty fun. Yeah. With that though, that's gonna wrap it up for us. So I'm gonna throw it back to our host, Bobby Black Wolf to introduce themselves, first of all, and also to get you set up for the next run, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition by Mechorazium. I should have asked how to pronounce their name. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see y'all for the next Daily Recap tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Augie donates $20 trying to stay up just to hear the Night Trap theme song. I probably won't make it. I'm too old. Wish me luck. I wish you all the luck. Air Onion donates $20. Let's make that Ocarina of Time randomizer run rather cold, shall we? Jazz125 donates $10 saying, donating because GDQ is an awesome event and I am hoping you guys can shout out my boss Graham for letting me watch every year while we are at work. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Graham. You're a great boss. Catch a Rye donates $100. Long time lurker, first time donating, though I don't have much. I just wanted to put my contribution to such a wonderful cause like Doctors Without Borders. Looking forward to the Final Fantasy VII remake run and everybody stay safe and healthy during COVID-19.